any character you've ever played, do you have to feel a personal connection to that character? When I play characters that commit murder, that emotion that, that is driving me in that particular scene has got to feel real right. to me. Mm -hmm. To me, at least to me. If it doesn't feel real to me, how the fuck am I gonna expect it to feel real to you? Michael K. Williams' rise is truly unconventional. The Brooklyn bred actor became a household name in the early 2000s after his celebrated role as Omar on the HBO series The Wire. He has most recently taken on the role of Leonard in Sundance TV series Happen Leonard. The plot of the series is based in Texas during the 1980s. Michael's character Leonard is a complicated man who is part of a crime investigating duo alongside James Purefoy, who plays Hep. You never smell anything funny? It's the old man's house. Hep, everything smells funny. Come on, dude. Can you tell me a little bit about what your, your first audition was like when you first started getting into acting? Actual first audition, I can remember acting was in a music video. It was for um, the Madonna secret video. I said a few things, I remember like, you know, boxing into the, into the camera, acting like a boxer. And uh, it was uh, 94, 95. And by what, three or four years later, I found myself in front of, you know, Mr. Martin Scorsese um, in 1998, auditioning for um, the movie he was doing in New York called Bringing Out the Dead with Nicolas Cage. And he looked at me after I read all three roles and he says, you're a damn good actor. And then he, he looked at the cast and he said, give him the part, give him the part he wants. He's a damn good actor, you, you're a good kid. And I remember my armpits was like, oh shit, I'm gonna see this fucking sweat. And, and um, I remember saying that was the day I, I, I stopped dancing and I could I give all my focus into to the craft. So for uh, Happen Leonard, what about that role spoke to you in particular? And can you separate it from any other role that did it speak to a certain uh, experience you've had in your life where you're like, I can, I can really connect to Leonard? The first main thing that, that, that connected me with Leonard was the opportunity to bring my old pal James Pearboy. And we got a dead body rotting under our feet. Right under our feet. We're gonna have to report it to the cops. Oh shit, hell no. Oh no. Hell, hey, okay. Well, just, just leave it, fix the floor. Huh? Oh, well, if your uncle did it, he's beyond punishment now. No one's gonna know about it. And he ain't gonna hurt anybody else, so. You don't mean that. After I read the writing, and it was set in the, you know, this, this kind of like this cowboy, Marines, all that stuff excited me. But when I realized that um, I can get James Pervoy on this motherfucker, it became really um, a special project. And, and because of, that's my brother like that. Like, you know, we rock like that. There's not another white man, I believe right now in Hollywood, that I have close friendship with off camera that I could have just so easily transferable to film, I should say, as I do with uh, James Pierroy yeah. right now. What in your own life did you connect with Will Leonard? You saying like it, it helped you, helped you heal to a certain extent? I understand Leonard's uh, frustration, you know, um, on on my own personal level. Mm -hmm. It's the frustration of feeling like okay, I played by the fucking rules. I've done what I was supposed to do, and you know. I, I have my own version of what that feels like to me sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I brought that to the character. The relationship between Leonard and Ivan mm -hmm. really parallels with my life right now as to where I feel like I'm going to be best used when it comes time for me to do my real work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I already know that 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 was a portal as to what's going to come in the future in my life where I'm going to be best of use in, our, in my community, you know, with, with young people. 
any character you've ever played, do you have to feel a personal connection to that character? The only thing really that I connect with, like me as Michael K. Williams, to any particular character that I play has, has got to be the emotion. If the emotion doesn't feel real to me, then the motivation, I'll be, I'll be acting. It's got to come from a real place. Like, I've never, Lord knows, I've never killed anyone in my life, you know. Um, I've never been put in that situation, thank God. But when I play characters that commit murder, that emotion that, that is driving me in that particular scene has got to feel real right. to me. Mm -hmm to me, at least to me. If it doesn't feel real to me, how the fuck am I going to expect it to feel real to you? Right, right. So, you know, I got to go meditate on some right, dark right. shit. Right, right. I'm not playing. Yeah. You know, thank God the, the, the situation is fictitious. Mm. I'm not playing. Right. With your roles, you know, you played a lot of queer characters. Do you think that LGBT issues were something that were a priority to you young in your life, or have you grown to appreciate it and grown to see it as a priority? The LGBT community has been a part of my life since I was a youngin. You know, um, I say this all the time. I said the the person that taught me the streets, that taught me how to protect myself the best I could, um, you know, was a dyke. <laughs> you know what I mean? A, a, a very aggressive female who was beautiful and didn't take no shit. That was my best friend. That was my running buddy in the street. You know, I was too soft to hang with dudes. You know, like you know, the, you know, I was corny. She toughened me up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that came with some stipulations. One was I went to a lot of gay clubs. <laughs> you know, hey, but she was cool as shit. You know what I mean? I went to a lot of gay bars, man. A lot of lesbian bars and shit. You know, so um, this is my my homage. To, to the to the community because that community has always embraced me, mm -hmm. never judged me. I was just Mike. I wasn't faggot Mike. I wasn't punk ass Mike. I wasn't black and ugly Mike. I wasn't corny Mike. I was just Mike. Mm -hmm. And that happened to me too because uh, growing up, I wasn't open minded enough at all. But once I turned uh, 20, one of my closest friends became a guy I went to high school with, a gay guy who we never talked in high school. I wasn't even, I wouldn't even be caught talking to him but we became like the best of friends. Mm. To me as a music journalist, I always try to give spotlight to the, to the gay community, like the music that's coming out of the scene, yeah, the dog. rappers who are rapping over Vogue beats. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you know, because yeah, that yeah. shit is hard to me. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely respect what you do when it comes to that. Because Thank it's you, something I had to battle in my own life. People like, oh no, that nigga gay, he hang out with so and so and so like I yo, let that shit go a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, that's what time. I'm saying. Like yeah, whatever. I had those struggles when I first befriended yeah, yeah, community, befriended people. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like yeah. even my own family is like, why you wanna hang around a gay person? Yeah. Like you haven't tried you haven't in the battles? Like, <laughs> no, like, like my own family, like, my family was like, you sure you're not telling me something? Uh, I'm like, no, nah, like it's not that serious. Like yeah. they just gay. He's like, it's a so the fuck what? Yeah, yeah. Something I liked about you in the wire that stuck out to me more than anything else, being from Baltimore is that you kind of took an effort to, to have that essence of being from the city. Watching the show, I'm like, damn, he actually made an effort. That, that, um, that really, that, that means a lot to me, yeah. brother, and, and thank you. Yeah. It was my first summer by myself in Baltimore. I had to walk the streets all the hours of the night by myself. <clears throat> what part of town? You name it, east, west, mm. just walking. It, it was then that I really started to get the tone to understand his voice. By season three, he was in the pocket. Yeah. I understood, it, I didn't, it, it wasn't, I wasn't mimicking, I understood where it came from. Mm -hmm. So how was it being in Baltimore, being a, being a Brooklyn guy? Cause in Baltimore being from over east or over west, they could change everything for you. They could change your whole experience as a person. So what was it like you being thrust into that? Me being a Brooklyn cat, it was hand in glove for me. I understood the vibration of the streets immediately. I got it. There is a black pride, a togetherness there. In spite of all the violence that goes on, you celebrate black culture more in that city. You know, it's not just pockets how it is in New York. Your whole city gets behind it. And it's, there seems to be a more consistent celebration of just black culture. Like, I can walk anywhere 
in Baltimore streets, and it, and, and, and it wasn't because I thought I was Omar from The Wire, because they would have, niggas would have whooped my motherfucking ass for real, though. You know what I'm saying? It was because I was Mike. Mm -hmm. Them motherfuckers like Mike. Right. Like, like, you know, I got blessed to meet some real good niggas. Like how I learned how to be in East Flatbush, Brooklyn, worked for them streets in right. Baltimore. Yeah. And they, they, were, they got me just as much as I got them. It's interesting because when I first moved here, I moved to uh, border East Flatbush and Crown Heights. That's where I'm from. Yeah, I live yeah. on um, Midwood. Oh, yeah, you in your Midwood, hood. Midwood between Midwood and Kingston what? and Albany. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, so I was like, <laughs> I need to be in this neighborhood. Coming, coming from Baltimore, it's like 65% black. Yeah. It's very therapeutic for me to be in that. I bet it is. Coming from where I'm coming from, it's just so you like. You can understand the, my love for your city, me coming yeah. from, because you were literally in my community that right. I was born and raised and lived like in, for like 30 some odd years of my life mm -hmm. in that one community. During the time you were playing, Omar, you were going through your own battles with addiction and living where, uh, living where you grew up when you played him to a certain extent, I think until the second season or so. Well, everybody know I'm from Brooklyn or East Flatbush, the Vanderveer Projects to be exact. You know, shout out to all my true Veer heads. Um, season one happened and I thought that I had died and gone to money heaven. You know, that was like, that was, that was the most amount of money I'd ever made, you know, per week and shit like that. Me in a pocket full of money in Baltimore, nothing good could come from that. <laughs> nothing, you know what I mean? And uh, um, I was as high as a the fucking dope funeral through the five dollar day hat with five, you know, that was a children. I was high, riding high, nigga, just, just stupid. You know what I'm saying? I, I screwed up my money. And um, it was then that I was like, like I said, Mike, you gotta wake up, you know? Um, if I don't get a grip, I'm gonna fuck this up. How is it? Good thing you brought him in as quick as he did. He od Damn, melted. Got them kids coming in out all hours of the night. Yeah. We haven't been able to track down his parents, so... So? I need you to sign right there. It says you're his uncle. Uncle Leonard. <laughs> crazy boy. Leonard, You're crazy. Leonard, Leonard, please help me keep him out of the system, please. Please. At least until I find his parents. Look, if you want to be his family, go right ahead. What I know about raising a kid? What did Uncle Chester know about raising a kid when he took you in? Hmm? What? So has Leonard, or being Leonard, helped you reconcile some things from your past? You know, Leonard's um, relationship with uh, Uncle Chester there's bits of that relationship between my mom and I, you know, which was very turbulent in my teenage years. Our relationship was very, very strained. Um, and, uh, you know, so there's a, through Leonard, there's a chance for me. I get, I get glimpses into um, certain things, yeah. you know, from my past and, and I'm, I'm excited to see where we go with season three, man. You know, this this shit is, you know, it's, it's uh, they don't call it the craft for nothing. With the success that you've had over the past couple of years, what's something that you still want to accomplish? My next phase in, in my career, hopefully, you know, God, God willing, will be uh, my production company, Freedom Productions, mm -hmm. that I'm, I've been maturing and nurturing um, um, some projects that we're developing. I feel very passionate about, you know, and uh, and right now I'm just in this in this zone, and, and you know everything just feels really good, you know, and I got a good team around me, mm -hmm. you know, and and uh, there is no space for bullshit. Mm -hmm. So a lot of your characters have been known to be about that life to to regulate mm -hmm. to a certain extent, sure. but I've seen in a lot of interviews you've done that you know you always say that I'm I'm not that guy, I'm the least like that, the least gangster, the least person to be shooting somebody or something like that. But what actually sets you off? I'm starting to realize I'm more like these characters that I give myself credit for. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a hustler. I work hard. I do what it takes. Um, not breaking any laws. I'm not going to hurt anybody. But I will push the fucking envelope to the line, to the limit. I've come to realize when I, as I look up now, 50 years old, I'm like, 
Okay. I, I, you got some young bucks can't keep it with me right now. Not with the stamina I'm, I'm rolling with. You know, I'm blessed. You know, for the life that I've come from, <laughs> all the, you know, the the garbage I put in my body, I'm right. real blessed to have you know health and and stamina, because this this is not the, the quarter of the game to, to to fall weak or to be on oh you know breaking down. Nah, man, I got the ball. And I'm running with it. Right. I'm running with it. Appreciate it. No doubt. Man. All right, man. All right, Thank you bless. for coming through. No doubt. Thank you for the time, man. No doubt. Definitely. Man.